to come up with anything, you know, earth shattering or there was no delusions that we we're going to sell billions of records. We always had the, the attitude that we wanted to play our music. And if somebody wanted to help us achieve that goal with their money and financial backing and their press and their, their radio expertise, we're into it. Well, Rust P never heard Do anything. Do the same thing. Up with the bike. Ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's nice. Another one. Another one's good. Hold it. Doc, ah. lift up the bike, cross it up. We had uh, Josh on drums, and so we were kind of a new band, we felt, like a new incarnation. We had new blood, and Josh was a few years younger than the rest of us. In the beginning of 92, I had just gotten out of The, uh, the Accused. I did this little demo at Reciprocal um, with Jack, with just me playing the drums, and it's like a little five-minute, or a little, like, 30-second clip. Then a few weeks later, I got a call from Kurt Danielson asking, you know, do you want to come try out for the band? You know, real snappy, could play lightning fast, and he played hard as hell. I've never played with a drummer that played as hard as he does. He was breaking shit regularly, and that was really fun. For this record, we wanted to do something different, um, and We'd been friends with Jay Mascus from Dinosaur Jr. ever since we'd uh, played with those guys at the Central in Seattle in 88. We had a major record deal and all this, you know, like a budget. We were there for, you know, two weeks. I went to the bank and, uh, and got a wire for 40 grand. Yeah, carrying around a roll of fat cash was, was a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> we spent it well on uh, nothing but rock and roll. Jay had a lot of good input. Most of the time, Jay just sat with his sunglasses in the back in the couch. And I swear to God, most of the time he was taking naps because he had the sunglasses on. You couldn't tell what his eyes were doing. We're getting better. major label nobody was breathing down our neck nobody came out to watch us or, or, or to, to, to be a watchdog or, or to to make sure that we were weren't blowing the company money on cocaine or nothing like that the last hours of the session how do you feel there bud I don't think it's quite as bad as Gary portrays it to me that's one of my favorite records too I mean uh, that one was like really turning point. That was we started to go more into the the metal edge of that one. Our our chops were much better. We're out with uh, Soundgarden, Alice in Chains. During that record, you know, we went out with really well known bands at the time. You know. And uh, we're we're holding our own. Yeah. Hi. The rave that follows us wherever we go. Yeah, boy. Don't make me 
get up and take that thing out of your hand and crack you over the head with it. What are you doing? Oh, man, I wish I knew. I did it. I did it all. It's great to be able to fucking be up there and sound louder than fucking God, you know, for a few minutes. in the hair. Don't you? Oh, you're sick. <laughs> Come on, Ted, right now. Bring the camera, follow me. What are you doing? <laughs> Kurt, are you encouraging this kind of behavior? Yeah. Like, I think it's good clean fun for kids today to urinate with the garbage cans. Usually we check out our dressing room though. It's like, let's go over and see Tad. And just walking in, you know, somewhere in Canada or, or, or in Germany, and and Tad and Josh and uh, Kurt just sitting there, just kind of that sort of well imbibed, you know, <laughs> vacuous sort of stare and glare. There would have been a whole lot more fun if they were somehow responsive in some, <laughs> in some kind. I mean, I mean. Gary was a blast because he was alert, you know, he knew what was going on. The other guys are sort of like a wall of vacancy. But it was amusing because they'd all walk out there and they'd, you know, they'd just blow doors. I'm still on drugs for a living. Actually, the guy in the green suit, he's a liar. He's an imposter. I just stay home and uh, work on taxidermy projects uh, and stuff, badgers for a living. I, I mean, we make money at this, the band, but uh, when, during the lean times, uh, I sell a few stuffed badgers on the side and make ends meet. And you see the press killed it? <laughs> well, I, well, the badgers were killed, uh, strangled. But I'm talking about the Seattle scene. Oh, excuse me, misunderstood there. <laughs> You can hold on to my back or something if you want. Yeah, you can I just hold on to my shirt. What contacts I'm gonna be? Yeah, you just hurting tonight. Yeah, and then uh, not that I need one to see it. Where I go to the bottom and then when I shoot out of the top, you snap the picture. Yeah. But don't be too specific, specific about the words because we're not sure what song. I can just go <laughs> habba 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 habba. That's good. Best muscle. <laughs> Why were we dropped? It was never explained, never clarified. There's uh, this poster 